The Dice Tower, Episode 5, originally recorded in June 2005, our top 10 thematic games. It's the Dice Tower, helping gamers out across the world. The Dice Tower is your online home for fun and informative discussion of all types of board and card games. Yeah, okay, that's good enough. Well, normally I would have a nice fancy intro recorded other than our standard one, but we had a little bit of a snafu this week. Originally, we were going to record episode 106 this week, and then Sam and I just couldn't get together, just things got in the way. And so what we're doing is we're posting our next archive show, episode 5. Now, next, I, I know that that's two archive shows in a row, and some of you like that, but next week we'll post episode 106, and then the week after that we'll post episode 107. So you won't be missing anything, any of the new material. We'll still have that on there. However, at the same time, there's a couple of things, a couple of announcements, a couple of things I want to talk about. First of all, even though today is not episode 106, we're still going to end this game contest. It's only fair. It's been a really interesting contest. We had over 400 entries involved. And the winner of this contest got all four expansion packs from Fantasy Flight Games for the game Battle Lore, the Dwarven uh, expansion pack, both of the Goblin expansion packs, and the 100 Years, um, 100 Years War expansion pack. And so what we did is we took all the people who emailed us, and to enter this contest, you had to tell us which... Uh, race you'd like to see next. Currently there's goblins and there are dwarves. What would you like to see other than that? I got all kinds of responses to this. Some people said elves. Some people said centaurs, undead, lizard men, minotaurs, eagles, giants, mercenaries, amazons, fairies. And a lot of people said, hey, we don't really care about any new races. Just give us more of those monsters that we can use, more of the giant creatures. And so a lot of good responses to that. We appreciate all of them. And we have four runners up here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to roll off between these four runners up. The winner, if they contact me within a week, will get, we'll be sending them the game. If they don't contact me, then we'll send it to the second highest, etc. Also, the second runner up will receive a copy of the, some extra goodies we have for the game Dungeon Twister. So let's get to our four runners up, which were randomly chosen from all those who entered. And that is Jared Jansma. David Olson, Yogurt Earl, and Phil Klaus. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to roll two 12-sided dice because I just like to roll weird dice. And the highest roll is the winner. So here we go. Our first roll is for Jared Jansma. And I am using a dice tower, hence the name. Jared rolled an 8 and a 6, which makes 14. All right, for David Olson. David rolled a 10 and an 8, so that gives him an 18. Sorry, Jared. Our next roll is for Yoga Earl. A 9 and a 1 gives him a 10. And our final roll for Phil Klaus is an 11 and a 1. And that gives you a 12. So congratulations to David Olson. You are a winner. Jared Jansma is our runner-up. And I need both of you to get in contact with me as soon as possible. Email me at thedicetower at gmail.com to, so that we can get your prizes sent to you. Now... We can't leave you hanging with just the end of this contest, and we would like to thank Days of Wonder for providing the game prizes for that contest. But we have another great contest coming up, and this one will last four more weeks. This one will end in episode 108. And this contest is for another, It's again, it's another single prize winner, but again, I'll throw in some more Dungeon Twister goodies for the runner-up. But this one is for the game StarCraft, the big game of the year. Or at least I, I think it's a big game of the year. I haven't got my copy yet, but I'm excited about getting it. And I would assume many people are excited. Here's a chance to win one of Fantasy Flight's big box games. And this one here is StarCraft, the board game. So if you're interested in getting StarCraft, the board game, email us at thedicetower at gmail.com. And this time, all you have to simply do is tell us what is your favorite Fantasy Flight game. What Fantasy Flight game do you like the best? If you've never played one, then tell us that, and we'll still enter you into contest. Don't forget, if you entered our last contest, you're automatically entered into this one. But if you enter this one, you'll get an extra entry. So make sure that you're emailing us at thedicetower at gmail.com. Uh, a couple other announcements. 
This one doesn't have anything to do really with the Dice Tower, but I just thought I'd throw it out there. I've started a new podcast called The Joy of My Salvation, and that's at uh, joyofmysalvation.com. It's a podcast basically uh, as a ministry for my church, so if you're interested in that, I encourage you to go check that out. Secondly, we're going to be having a live podcast, and by the time I post this, uh, the live podcast is probably over. But we're having a live podcast using a website called TalkShoe.com where you listeners can call in. If this one goes fairly well, we'll have more of these in the future. But I'll be posting that one probably not in the RSS feed, but probably directly on my site, uh, TheDiceTower.com. So there you have it. Well, let's get into today's episode and listen to what Joe and I had to say way back in June 2005 about thematic games. Well, with that bad sound quality, but, but still, welcome to the Dice Tower. <laughs> I'm Tom Vassell. Joe Stedman over here. We're going to have to get a new player for this or something. That sounded pretty bad. We'll have to see what happens when we uh, listen to it later. Well, anyway, uh, this is the Dice Tower. This is a, a weekly show about board games, uh, war games, American games, Euro games. Whatever. It's mostly about Euro games. No. Nah. Right, Joe thinks it's about war games. It is. <laughs> but Joe's wrong. Yeah, right. Actually, we try to cover everything. We've mentioned CCGs, RPGs, and miniatures once in a while. Just to make fun of them. Well, actually, I thought you liked miniatures. <laughs> oh, I thought about CCGs. I like CCGs. But I did see that Valerie Putman agreed with us on our assessment of CCGs. <laughs> oh, good. Uh, this is kind of a strange show. We've actually recorded shows six and seven already, and this yeah. is show five. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's happening is this, is a, this show is actually live. Well, not live, but... It's live! Well, Joe's going to go to chat and check it out. I'm going live right now, so God nerds is there. <laughs> but um, <laughs> he probably is. And so we're doing this show at a normal time slot, but we're also doing four shows over the summer because Joe Stenton is uh, traveling to America. Yeah. A quick mention that. Yeah, I'm going to go back to America this summer. My wife and my kids and I, we're going to be visiting a few churches and seeing family, and I'll be at Origins and uh, just taking a vacation, really. And so I'll talk about that a little bit more later. All right, okay, so while he's gone, we're doing four episodes. So we've actually recorded the next two episodes, which are about Origins. Exciting for you to listen to. Uh, We've actually recorded those already, and so you'll be able to hear them uh, in a couple weeks. Over the summer, we're going to go to a bi-weekly schedule, so you'll hear us every other week. Mm -hmm. But we'll pick it back up again in August, hopefully. We will, and at that point, we'll do a review of Origins, and we'll probably have 60,000 new board games to talk about. At least 60,000. Yeah. No exaggeration. <laughs> Literally. Literally. So, we're pretty excited. Joe's actually leaving the country of Korea in less than a week. Amen. So, we have to get a decent amount of gaming. We actually have two gaming days, nights scheduled before he leaves. Yes, we do. I'm looking forward to that, too. And I think we don't have anything planned. I'm trying to get everyone to play the, a massive Carcassonne. No. <laughs> One more time. Because I'm getting Princess and the Dragon tomorrow. Ew. And so, I mean, let's add it and just have this massive Carcassonne battle. We actually had a really good game session. Uh, is, yours, is yours popping, too? If, if you hear us popping, we're sorry. It's because we didn't snap, crackle, pop. <laughs> but uh, we just had a, a game session, and it was a sad session for me because I did not win. Not all the games, not any of the games, but <laughs> none of them. Woo! So who did win? Joe won all three games we played yeah. that night. Yeah. Uh, the first game I don't take any credit for. Shadows over Camelot? No, 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 no. No. It was the Euro game. Oh, in fact, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit. It was Louis XIV, and Joe won that. Yeah, and then won. we played Shadows over Camelot. The traitor won. Joe was the traitor and did an excellent job. I had no <laughs> idea that he yeah. was a traitor. I'll give the game props. I enjoyed it much more this time than the first time I played it. I really, really enjoy the game. I played it five times already, and I really, I think it works better with a big group. But yeah. man, the, you, having the trader in it really yeah, makes I'd it even, better. I'd even suggest almost making a trader be in the game or guaranteeing that there's at least one person as a trader. I like the variant included in the rules where you you use as many cards as there are people plus one plus one trader, so that there's a, a minutiae right. possibility that there's no trader, but highly likely. And what was the other game we played? And then we played Tigers and Euphrates. Ooh. And I think it was Joe's first victory. It was my first. With our gaming group, it was my first victory. Yeah. I was we play good. a mean Tigers and Euphrates. Yeah, that's intense. We don't, uh, <laughs> it's Bob, our house, me, Joe, and Shin. Shin and Yu. Shin Yu. And 
Normally I win. Yeah. And even this time, I thought I had it in the bag. How, many, how, how much did I beat you by? A cube. <laughs> a single cube. <laughs> that was that one I snuck in the, under my uh, my thing when you were looking. Yeah, well, Joe, Joe did a good job. Stop me when it mattered. It was a good game. Always like a good, hard play for Tiger King with Brady's. It was a good time. I don't think I'll ever play it with my wife. I don't think she'd like that. Actually, my wife plays Tiger King with me. She was mad when I traded it to you. Well, two I, players doesn't quite do it though. I mean, it's two players is good. Three players is pretty good. Four players are just great. It's the best. Yeah. Especially when all four know what they're doing. Of course, we sound kind of snooty. <laughs> we you know, know what we're doing. You need to know what you're doing, or you're just not worth playing the game with. But I might, I might have to go join a private mailing list or something. I actually think that Tigers <laughs> and Euphrates is one of those games that works really, really well when everyone knows what they're doing. Yeah, because if you get one person who's a newbie, then it kind of throws the whole game off. Right. Um, I mean, obviously people need to learn somehow, but it's just, when everyone knows what they're doing, it just fits together so well. Well, there's two different types of gaming times. There's like the time when you're training people, and then a time when it's just the buddies, right? And you, you get that really good game going, and that's I, I covet those times. Well, we had another gaming session with our wives and some other people, and yeah. Joe was stuck playing, uh, what, 10 days in... In the USA? Ten days What's in the USA. What's your opinion of that game? I'm a history teacher and a geography teacher, so I kind of like it. But I got frustrated because of one of the people I was playing with had, like, every airplane for no reason. <laughs> and she didn't really know what she was doing. And so <laughs> it was like everyone else was just sitting there not knowing what to do because we could not get any airplane. I just don't depend on airplanes, man. Well, I got stuck with Ohio, and I couldn't get out of there. Was, uh, uh, for those of you who don't know about ten days in USA, it's kind of like Racco. And you're trying to <laughs> put all your cards in order so that you can show a trip across America. And planes let you jump from one state to another state as long right. as they're the same color. I think your wife ended up winning because she used the she Monica. My wife didn't understand again that well, and she t- she discarded twice the purple the purple things the yeah. purple. And your wife picked them right up and. Well, my uh, at, after after Joe left, my wife played uh, another couple. They played a three-player version of the game, and. The, this is the only time I've ever seen it happen. One person won the game. His name's Richard. He won the game without doing anything. What? All his stuff lined up perfectly right when he got it. I've great. never seen that before. And so he said, where's the fun in this game? <laughs> I just won. <laughs> but the next game, went. they played again, and, and it went a lot differently. Yeah. It's like we were playing, uh, I played a gaming session at my house last night with another couple, and uh, what is that pirate game I have that's a card game? Not the Not the one where you take the loot, but the one that you have the different color pirates, and you're trying to make a... A pirate crew. You can pirate like, ten or pirate. You, get, you can use two colors, and it's it's a really a stuck on theme. Oh, definitely. But it's a it's okay. It's game. a new game last year. Uh, isn't it called Mutiny or Pirate Ten? Yeah, uh, I, I can't remember. Actually. We don't even know what games are anyway, called. Don't listen to us. We're not experts. <laughs> if you look in the rules in the very back, it says if a person is able to complete the game with uh, without having any stowaways, then they automatically win the game, no matter what the score was at that point and how long you've been playing. As the game ends, <laughs> so it must be a pretty rare thing in that game. Well, do you do you like games that have uh, automatic automatic victories? Like the birthday has it. Remember if oh yeah, if you. I I actually find those games fascinating because if someone's a runaway victory, you never know what can happen. But then again, <coughs> someone can accidentally win too, like he did last night. <laughs> oh, and Saint Peter or in uh, Louis the Fourteenth? No, and I didn't accidentally. I guess I'm getting ahead of myself here. Ten days in USA. Ten days in USA. Yeah. Yeah. Well. So that's what's new with us. It's been a good week of gaming, um, and this week, coming week, looks like it's going to be a good game, a good week too. Yeah. And then, of course, Joe leaves for America. My friend Shin Yu is going to be going to England soon. Bob yeah. is departing for America in June. Sad so I'm gonna times. Have to, Sad times. I'm going to have to Korea. dig up a new gaming group here. Speaking of, if there's anyone in Korea, Koreans, Americans, wherever you're from, doesn't matter. If you're in Korea and you want a game with me and Tom, just drop us an email. Speaking of that, my email is joestedman at gmail.com. And mine is Tom Vassell with a V at, and one S at gmail.com. You can also email yes, us we at, just got this new one. at dicetower at gmail.com or thedicetower at gmail.com. Right. Well, we're we're going to keep both of them or are we just going to kill one off? No, we'll keep one just in case someone sends it there by accident. <laughs> we prefer you to send it to us at the dice tower. The dice tower. The dice tower. We could put it, we could change. I wonder if the dice tower is open for all of them. <laughs> I'm like Chicago or something. The dice tower. <laughs> So, it's been a good week, and unless we drag on and stumble around here talking and rambling, we'll get to our so questions. Me and you ramble? <laughs> well, we have a, a decent amount of questions this week. Speaking of that, in our next two episodes, 
and actually our next four episodes, if you don't hear your question read that you asked yeah. us, it's because we're not answering them over the summer. We're stuck in a space-time distortion, and we're trying to fight our way out. Maybe we'll get so many questions that when we do our shows in August... Just you know, a whole question it'll show. It'll be all questions. Yeah. All right, the first one here is from Rod... F-A-G-E. I, I would hate to pronounce his name wrong. Page? Like Page, like the, on Star Trek? <laughs> well, it looks like it rhymes with Page. Page? <coughs> well, anyway, he's from Board Game Geek, and he talks about his... He says he has three young daughters, two months, six years, and seven years, and he's looking for games to play with a six-year-old and a seven-year-old. And he has Carcassonne Hunters and Gathers, Carcassonne the Castle, Cart- Cartagena, Flea Circus, Gula Gula, Lost City, Settlers of Katana, and Ticket to Ride. Your typical... Cream of the crop for, mm-hmm. I think. So he wants to know what games would you suggest for this game age group? Six and seven year olds. Well, I got my oldest is a five and Joe's oldest is a four. I say advanced squad leader. Starter, <laughs> advanced starter. Li- they got the starter kit now and it's they're get girls. Them, get them started they're young. Girls. See, that's a that's a, such a sexist statement, Tom. I don't care. It's proven. <laughs> Very few women like war games. Uh, well. I mean, what, does your wife like war games? That's beside the point. That's that is the point. <laughs> My daughter Jessica, she's two now. She will be a war gamer gogner. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> let's 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 talk about that now and see. We'll come back to this show, <laughs> and we'll say in June two thousand five, <laughs> Joe said his daughter be uh, a grognerd. Yep. Is it a grognet? And, and unfortunately, my oldest son Joey will probably be a Euro gamer. <laughs> 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 well, if I had my way. <laughs> you Joe, convert, I'm stolen your kids. Convert them all. Okay, but to answer his question, um, I, I was looking at my collection. These are just some games I, I quickly thought of. Pig Pile, which is just like Flea Circus. Um, Pick Picnic and Nobody But His Chickens. Most kids can get those down pretty well. All you do is play a card. And you can then teach them as the game goes by what each card does. Quicksand uh, from Fantasy Flight Games. King Me from Da Vinci Games. First hand, made by um, some company. I don't know. Uh, Eureka, which is out of print, so that one might be hard to get. Cairo, Manhattan. Uh, I'm not Manhattan. sure. Manhattan. Well, Manhattan. We played Manhattan last night with my other group I was playing with, and that's not a kid's game. There's well, a lot, there's a lot of strategy in that. I understand that, but don't you think kids could learn to play it? All you do is tell them play a card and put it in it. Now, kids would probably just try to put buildings on top of yours. Kids can learn how to play War of the Ring, too, but you're not going to teach them. <laughs> but I think Manhattan's possible. I guess. Well, we we really can't answer your question totally because I just don't play with that age too often. No. I'm just teaching my five-year-old how to play some games. My, my son likes the uh, Candyland, so <laughs> they got the Candyland, the kids' version, because like, the regular Candyland's too advanced. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? My, my two-year-old daughter, she has this Candyland. Oh, I you, see. You put your finger in and spin the thing in it. Anyway. Then he says, what rules modifications would you recommend for some of the games I have to make it easier for them to win? That's interesting. Take the box, put it 10 feet away from the table, and throw pieces. If it lands in the box, you win. <laughs> You're being facetious, Tom. You got nothing real to say? That's what I would... <laughs> I've done stuff like that before with kids. Um, I don't know. With Carcassonne, the hunters and gatherers, you can have them just put the same piece together, like make it like a puzzle at first. And get points for that. Carcassonne, the castle, the pieces aren't made to go together, so I don't know. Lost City, you could just go with the artwork, right? Try to, like, play war and just flip the cards. Lost City is wild. It's really easy. It has subtleties I don't know a six- or seven-year-old could get. But I, yeah, I, would, I wouldn't even play with the rules at all. Just, you know, because each, each, doesn't each expedition have its own uh, specific artwork? And it goes in order? Yeah. I don't know. You could probably figure out something like that. Well, though, these are six- and seven-year-olds. They can read the numbers. That's true. I don't know. Settlers of Catan, you could do. I think you could just play the game as normal and just explain each each turn. Maybe play with open hands with everybody. I still think Advanced Squad Leader. And Ticket to Ride. Ticket to Ride would be a tough one, I think. While I think a 10-year-old could understand it rather easily, uh, 6 and 7 might be pushing it. Maybe okay. you could play without the destination. What grade is 6 and 7? Second grade? Third grade? First and second. First and second? I don't know. Yeah. Just give him a PlayStation. <laughs> well... He did, he did mention Gulo Gulo, and I will say I agree with him that it is one of the best games for adults and kids because kids are actually better at it than adults. They can pull those the, little eggs out with their little fingers. What about that one game that is a kid's game, but it's, a, it's like a pirate, pirate Pete or something like that? And adults like it even more than kids do? Are you talking about that, that, that barrel that you stick the swords in and the guy's <laughs> head pops out? <laughs> no. 
<laughs> oh, what's it called? Captain Clever. How about that? Yeah, that's what's Captain Clever. Captain Clever's going to show up on a turkey list one of these days for me. <laughs> it, it looks interesting, but it's just... Isn't that a kid's game, though? Well, it's marketed as an adult game, I think. Oh. I think kids would have a better time at it. It was just too simplistic. But that, that's a good idea. I think maybe Captain Clever may be what you need. Yeah. Maybe I can just trade your mind. I don't, I don't like the game. Ah, Corsari. I just I remember the game. <laughs> Corsari. That's the game. <laughs> Jumping on his question, answering my... Whenever ramble. Joe's real quiet, it's because he's trying to hunt down a game that he's thinking of. <laughs> you think I'll do this ahead of time. Well, here's a, a question or a comment from Grognaz. Now, this is a back to, to the future moment for us. Because in either our next or the, either our sixth or seventh episode, I can't remember which one, we went online at the very end of the episode to Geek Chat, which is part of BoardGameGeek.com. Which no one seems to know about. <laughs> right. We're going to actually, I'm going to schedule some chats in there over the summer. Yeah. Um, mostly so I can hook I'm up with Joe. Hello! No, you got to say, hello, everybody. <laughs> hello, everybody! <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, so we got on and Grognaz was the only person there. And we said, do you have a statement for the show? And he was all a little bit confused. And so we just said, okay, never mind. And <laughs> we ended our show. Yeah. So he sent us this response. He says, hello, Tom. And just what was the true reason for you guys popping into the chat? <laughs> well, the true reason was we just wanted to see if anyone was We wanted there. to make fun of you, all right? Well, no. I, <laughs> you could have at least made it in there sooner, and then we could have conducted a more in-depth chat on whatever. Well, Grog, I'm not sure I want an in-depth chat <laughs> on our show with you. Tell Joe I'm only kidding about him becoming another sidekick, oh, as I consider you both to be of co-equality. Aww. Blah, blah, blah. The two of you compliment one another since you're able to cover what the other Danes do. Danes do? <laughs> Should we hug now? Is that what's supposed to happen uh, at this point? No. I look forward to hearing the latest installment of the show, in quotation marks, and I hope that GameFest provides another link that I can access for this. What is that mean? Yeah, I have no idea. He's the only person who's complaining. If you have a problem downloading our show, let me know. I'll email it to you. <laughs> um, because, you know, we have so many fans that we, we could actually have the time to email our show. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's the good thing about being small. We can actually cater to people so we get big and famous, and then we'll be like, who, who is this? We'll be, snob, we'll be snobs in the future, right? So be our friends now, so when we become he, rich and popular, we actually snobs. suggested that we transcribe the show. Uh, yeah, right. So if anyone out there wants to transcribe the show, be our guest. I'll, I'm give, not, you, I'll give you two geek gold. I won't give you any because that's just a <laughs> retarded thing to do. Oh, God, you gave me ten geek gold. If you transcribe it, I'll give it back. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess he didn't have a question. He's, so we'll go to Ben Harris, go also from Board Game Geek. He says, "I heard you mention that you were going to play Louis the Fourteenth on the Dice Tower. What's your thought on the rating after one play?" So, Joe, what's your rating after one play? Oh, hang on. I need to roll the, roll the ten-sided die. I'm waiting. Yeah, well, just never mind. Just give your rating. <laughs> it's going to go off in the we middle. Need, of I'm going to fire you, Tom. We need to get someone who knows what the computers are for. Okay, well, anyway, Louis the 14th, I give that a, probably a three. Maybe a four. A that four, low? A, maybe a five because I won. <laughs> what is that? What did you just play? <laughs> I don't know, even know what that was. <laughs> anyway, no, we played it uh, our last gaming session, and I thought that I had lost miserably, but I ended up winning. Yeah, and see, as we were playing the game, I said, well, okay, <laughs> that was my rating. Uh, what about I give it? I think, I think I, I'm going to have to give it a six, with the option of going down. There you go. Because I thought I was winning the game, by far. I mean, everyone thought I was yeah, killing I, everybody. I, thought I, w I had basically ready to throw in the towel. And then Joe won at the end because he got a lot of those chips. On the, little, the, little, the little shield so crest. So my initial reaction after playing it was, what in the world? Then I thought about it more and thought, okay, a game that has multiple paths to victory is good. But even with that, and even with the various strategies, the game just wasn't fun. Yeah. It was a good game, but it wasn't a fun game. I liked some of the mechanics, but overall, it wasn't that. And yeah, basically, you're you're putting it's like area influence, and you're flipping boards over, and you're trying and to it, win it reminded tiles. Me of Pizar to it's reminding me of Pizarro, kind of. Yeah, but it just I don't know. I just I just did not find it to be fun. Good, but not fun. I didn't enjoy what I was doing. Even when I was winning, I just thought, no, let's let's get this over with. And I don't know. It was it was okay. So my our initial ratings are poor, 
but we'll probably end up playing it again. Yeah. In the this sometime this year. We'll to put it somewhere in our list of seven or eight hundred games. Maybe I'll play it at Origins. <laughs> but you know, I, I feel the same way about a lot of Alea's games. They're interesting, but they're not always fun. Hey, someone signed on, dude. Someone named Marduk sixty six. Oh hi, hi Marduk sixty six. Oh, speaking of which, right now we need to apologize to Physics, F I Z Z I X. Um, I think his first name is Mike, Michael. I hope. Could, uh, I'll look it up on Board Game Geek. <laughs> but what we did last week... Is oh, we, we ran read, over his question, right? It, yeah, we read some of his questions, but we didn't say the, the the right person's name. And so he was a little saddened that we didn't mention his name on he the He wants air. to hear his name on a podcast. All right, so physics. <laughs> well, I, I, I guess we should read his, his actual name, but I can't remember where Well, you look like I can read the next question. If you Go want. ahead. All right, this was from Ben Harris, also at Board Game Geek. It says, hi, I was floored that neither of you had played Backgammon before, or at least since childhood. Surprise. Even though you are guys a big wait, even though you guys are big into theme, I really suggest giving it a try. At first, most people think it's purely a game of luck, but once you start playing, you can find strategies and use probability, intuition to give you a strong lead. I feel like backgammon. Hefa said he feels like a backgammon evangelist, but it's my it's his only ten on his board game geek profile. That's amazing. If you're interested, he gives a link. It's www.bkgm.com. And it's uh, a good place for you to start. I think I went there and checked it out. It was like a backgammon page with all kinds of games that you can join and things. I hope backgammon intrigues you and gives you another second look at abstracts. Also, by the way, Othello is not a simpler version of Go. Joe said that, not me. (laughs) I'll explain in a second. They both can play play completely different, and that'd be like comparing HeroQuest to Talesman. Now... And then he says, anyway, great show. Um, as always, I'm excited to hear you guys at the same show. No, you're uh, supposed to say the great show slowly. Great the, the, show. The great <laughs> show. <laughs> anyway, no, Othello and Go are the same because they got black and white pieces on the checkboard, and it's abstract. That's all I meant. <laughs> well, I know that you love, I know you love backgammon. Um, hey, I'm willing to try it. I just, I just really like theme. Add a theme to backgammon, and I'll play it. Uh, anyway, the person whose name we forgot, uh, Physics, I, I think his last name is pronounced Michael Panisi, so I'm pretty sure that's how you say it. But either way, Mike, we're very sorry we didn't say your name. Thanks for asking the questions. Thanks for caring so much. <laughs> <laughs> so who was that? That was Jesse Acosta. Now we go on to our most vocal questionnaire. He's, <laughs> he's very big on Consum World. He's also on Board Game Geek. Joe found out that he's on the uh, historical... Um He's on the historical committee from the International Gaming Association. Which we didn't know. I was just happened to be flipping through the, looking at the nominations this year. And we're going to save that for another show because I got some thoughts on some of the nominations for the historicals, like Memoir 44. <laughs> what a good choice. What a good choice. I can't believe it got nominated. It's what a great a game. A historical simulation? Come on. Moving on. If that, if, you know, I, maybe I should save this for another rant or something, but if, they, if that wins, I'm, I will not even look at their GM, their awards anymore. You will look at them. Uh, just a mock <laughs> How is that different than what you're doing now? Because I, I, I lose all credibility in their, their board. If they, if they, if, if they, if it's one thing to nominate it, because I think anyone on the board can nominate it. So one guy might have just thought, oh, this is a neat idea. But if it actually wins, then it just tells me that the guys they got in historical simulations know nothing of history or simulation. Uh, memoir is about history. It's about, it's an, it's, it's, anyway, let's keep going. I like the game. Don't get me wrong. It's a good beer and pretzels or root beer and pretzels. Why are we arguing this over this? All right. We always do. Speaking of backgammon, and he mentioned theme, just to get you your appetites whetted, our top ten list today is going to be top ten thematic games. We, me and Joe are both big on theme. So, yeah, I think you'll enjoy our games because there's no doubt that they actually are the top ten because our opinions are all that matters. So. Yep. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> the person we're talking about is Waldo Harris is his name. And... Here's some of his questions. He just said, great show, guys. I listen to this podcast because you don't sound like you're telling a series of in-jokes half the time. And then he makes reference to another <laughs> podcast. But I, I don't know any other podcast. Yeah, what other podcast? Hello, <laughs> But really, really I love it. We, we really do realize that there are a lot of people who listen to this who don't read every single board game on the thing on the internet. Sure. If there are things that we say in the show that you don't understand or you don't know hey. what we're talking about, email us and we'll try and explain it. Yeah, we're just a couple of dudes, you know, who don't have any fans. So we don't have time to explain every gaming <laughs> term every episode, but... By all means, I have nothing better to do. Send me an email. Yeah, and half the time we're off here rambling, 
we could be... Uh, like, for instance, I'm on Geek Chat right now, and this guy Marduk has no idea what a podcast is, and he's probably never heard of me or Tom. <laughs> Let me look at... But, but if he's in Geek Chat, he's probably heard of Dragners. He, <laughs> Let me look up his profile. Oh, he has no avatar. He's from Ontario. Well, let's look at his tens. Okay. He's only got three. Attack and Memoir 44. Go! Both very good and historically accurate. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I can't. Attack has nothing to do with history. Uh, it doesn't have anything to do with ultimate mm-hmm. history. It risks 22 tens and 9. <laughs> 8.5. Okay. Okay, so then Wall Harris says, Tom, you're absolutely right about Crocodile Pool Party. What uh, P- Crocodile Pool Party is semi-infamous for being one of the games that I despise. Actually, Joe doesn't like it either. So we're kind of agreed there. It's, it's a truly horrific game. And Walt, in a previous episode, he sent us an email telling us about what a great game it was in the German version and how it was good multiplayer. Mm-hmm. And I found that confusing because it was a two-player abstract. So I, I emailed him that. Or no, we said it on the show. And he said that the original German name of Crocodile Pool Party was, in fact, identical to the game that he mentioned. So it's a game with the same name with two different games. And it's Wet Sick Were Khan, I think. Ooh, we got another person signed on. So he really says we should check that out, so I think that we should should check that out. Joe, this question is for you from Walt. All right. He says that you mentioned that you don't like World Turf, which right. you said last time. My like wife, my wife actually it. slapped me when I got home and she listened to the show. <laughs> she called me a hypocrite and a liar because, like, I'll always say, oh, let's play Laurel Turf. And I know it makes her happy. She's not you're going to get slapped again when she listens to this show. <laughs> Says, but you kind of petered out on your reasons for disliking it. But Thank you, Walt, for making that uh, astute observation. Did Joe I? didn't have any really good reason, except <laughs> he played it too much. <laughs> no, I, it just gets monotonous. I mean, he says, I love this game. I love the unusual betting and bonus system. It's a perennial favorite with gaming groups. Oddly enough, Earl Gray's a horse that seems like he'll perform the worst. What's a frequent front runner with our group because he always gets our sympathy bet? <laughs> Okay, the game was fun the first 20 times I played it. He says, if you hate it so much, will you? what will you take and trade? Yeah, I cannot, the game for I cannot trade it. But for all those people who are interested in getting it, because it is worth getting, yeah. I, I think that you should wait until face-to-face comes out with their version. It would be a nicer version. You'll be able to tell the horses apart a little bit better. Yeah. Is that light brown, medium brown, or dark brown? Yeah, no doubt. Hey, we actually have a guy who's listened to our show before on uh, Geek Chat. He hasn't seen any questions. Anyway, back to Royal Turf. I don't know. I just, it just got boring. I mean, and it's too long for what it is, I think. And it's just, I don't know. There's so many other games out there. All right. He, uh, Walt talks about playtesting then. He says he's been on quite a few playtesting teams, and he, ta- he concurs with my rant that the process is necessary. The problem is keep a team motivated and focused. It's very tough to get a playtesting team to report in accurately, to play every variation of the game they can conceive, and to actively try to break a design. Not everyone is a Tom Vassal, which is <laughs> Amen to good. That. Volunteers tend to volunteer at their leisure and on their own schedule. Well, don't get me wrong. Well, I, I, I dislike playtesting. I would prefer other people to do it. I like to playtest, actually. Well, well then send Joe your playtest games. I'm actually, like to, I like the finished products. I'm still playtesting the game right now, but I never got around to finishing this at... Uh, Stylog, Stylog 13. Oh, we'll probably play test the game tomorrow night. Oh, Bob wants us to, doesn't he? It's a bird yeah. game, even. No, it's not a bird game. Oh, that's right. This is the other one. It's yeah, we can't game. talk about it because it's not published yet. But it's a. We can just say that it's about mythology. M- mythology, m- Mediterranean. <laughs> it's, it's about mythology, but we actually found a, a decent game, very thematic. Yeah. Anyway, he says the only pay a play tester usually gets is a copy of the game that they're already sick of and won't play for a long time. <laughs> So it doesn't surprise me if something that's an obvious error in game design remains undiscovered until after it gets published. Yeah, it's not an excuse. Well, I... No, I'm sorry. Look at us. We, we play a game one or two times. Some people play 247 games in Puerto Rico. Angela. <laughs> Angela. But most of us... Most of us don't play games that often. So how can you expect a playtesting team to play a game hundreds of times and try just to break me, it? Just let me play it once. I'll break it. <laughs> That's actually not a bad idea. If you're listening out there and you're a game company and you want someone who will find a way to break your game. I'll find the most backwards and retarded way to play the game Joe, and I'll try it. Joe can do it. <laughs> Joe can do it. And then I'll win. <laughs> every time, not every time, but I'll, I'll be teaching a new game and Joe will say, what about this? And I'll say, who would even want to do that? She's like, yeah, but what does it say in the rules? So I have to search the rules for some obscure thing that Joe's trying to do. Yeah. <sighs> All right. Last question from Walt. And he said that he's trying to be less wordy this time, which he was. 
He says, what's your take on Axis and Allies collectible miniatures? A bold new direction in war game design? Or has Hasbro checked their collective soul at the door? Well, first of all, I'm not sure that Hasbro has a collective soul. I think that they, they did it. <laughs> Hasborg. But we are the Borg. Now, now, look, they said they don't like to be called that. Your board games will be assimilated. Look, I, I'm actually... I don't care if they like several. what it... What the, the Hasbor, uh, they're they going to send their, their thugs out here to Korea and mess, tough me up a little bit? <laughs> Come on, I like, I like the guys there. Um, but they're like the, the, guys the who, Axe Finale is quite the miniatures? They're like the guys who work for Microsoft. <laughs> I don't think there's anything to do with checking your soul, though. I just think it's cashing in on the cash cow, man. Yeah, well, the, 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 he says that, but I'll probably buy some, so... So why? Just and a chance to buy miles. pre-painted historical miniatures is great. Because you don't have to use the cheesy Hasbro rules or the cheesy uh, rules that are going to come with them. And anyway, once you see it, I, I guarantee you, after a week of the miniatures being sold, you'll see web pages where people have repainted them, and they'll be talking about how crummy the paint jobs were on the original ones. Hey, this guy um, on, the, on Geek Chat, Smoke, he's from the UK. He just gave us a great idea for a top ten list for a future show. What? He wants... Um, Top ten list that a Euro gamer should try from a war pointers of you know, or top ten games of, to introduce a war gamer into Euros and top ten games for a Euro for a war gamer to, or a Euro to war games. You know Good idea. Saying. We were just thinking of a top ten list, and so we'll do that. Top ten they're called gateway games. Yeah, gateway games, games that get people into the hobby. So I'll try to I'll do my games that war games that I think I could hook a Euro gamer on, and you'll do your Euro gamers that a war gamer might like. After a lot of my interviews with the war gamers, I think. I think I could guess the games that are on Joe's list, but we'll we'll wait for that show. <laughs> I'll I'll try and guess them. He won't he won't show me his top ten list till the show. Yeah, and, I, and I'll try and guess the games and see if yeah, I can get them. Yeah, at first we were trying we were showing each other see, our show. See, see if you can guess mine too. I bet I bet you'll get at least five of them right. I'm sure I will. We, if we first started doing the show, we would show each other our top ten list, and then we realized that it was more fun to, to reveal them during the show because then we can like laugh at each other and make fun of each other yeah, more. Yeah, because I look it's at Joe's list and I'll say, what? <laughs> I thought it would sound better on air for me to say that. <laughs> what? What? Well, here's a what? simple question. Give me my, give me my uh, scumbag quote because that's what I say when you... when you. The scumbag <laughs> thing has been uh, <laughs> trying to run now for a really long time. Oh, no. I can't I, hit my scumbag? I, I, I think I jammed the program up again. <laughs> this computer's all messed up. If you want to donate a new computer to us to use for our show, we'll, we'll be sure to give you some credit. <laughs> well, it would actually be, well, let's go on to the next question. By Garrett Herder, and he wrote a, actually a long thing that said, great show, blah, blah, blah. And then his one question was this, have you ever lost the game on purpose? Yes or no? Yes. Yes, definitely. <laughs> now, what are our reasons for doing I so? Can, I can name one right off the top of my head, talk, kill Dr. Lucky. <laughs> Yeah, Don't I, you think I, that's a unique case? No, I lost that game on purpose because I wanted it to be over. <laughs> and then, I, let's see, I, I've lost a game. I used to lose games of cards all the time when I was playing with my uh, friends in the Army. <laughs> I have lost a game. I have lost a game to someone with a bad temper before because I didn't want them to now, is our show explode. Still re- our show still recording? Okay. Yes, sir. <laughs> it is running. That's good. Uh, we just thought we might have shut everything down, but we didn't. All right, so Half the Lost Games on Purpose was actually a good article on um, thegamesjournal.com. Thegamesjournal.com, run by Greg Alex Nepicus. I think that's how you pronounce his last name. And he, someone there wrote an article about should you let your kids win at games. And the lady was very vehemently against that. He said it doesn't teach your kids anything to let them win. Uh, I recommend you go read the articles and... Give us your your opinions on it. I think, well, I don't. I won't say what I think until we hear it from our readers, because mm. I want to make sure I agree with the majority. Right. <laughs> All right. Uh, Mitch Willis here actually uh, has given each of us a question, so we'll do Joe's. Says Joe, I think you probably prefer the World War II war games, but have you seen or heard anything about the new Napoleonic war game from Simmons, Bonaparte at Ma- Malengo? <laughs> I guess. If so, what is your opinion of it? I have heard of it. It's am I definitely on my top ten list for 2005 games I want to get. I don't usually play out of the era, out of the century. What's your name, scumbag? Yeah. Hey, it finally worked. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about you, Eric, uh, Eric or whoever you were. Mitch. <laughs> Mitch. <laughs> no, uh, I, I, it looks great. It's a block game. It's Napoleonics. It's supposed to be a really good game from what I've read. I'd, I've never played it. I'm looking... I'm actually... Wanting to play that at Origins. Actually, I'm I'm hoping to put together a top ten games that I want to play at Origins. Well, I'm pretty excited. I, five guys in Board Game Geek, we have actually 
schedule the die mocker game. Ooh, die mocker. It's already it's already set up there. Oh. Five. But you're gonna be playing more games anyway. That's but true. That's not really. It's one of the few games that I don't really get a chance to play much because even though you and I like it, mm-hmm. who else does? We can teach our wives to play it. <laughs> I, I don't think. Anyway, that I would like to get that game, uh, the Napoleon, uh, the. Um yeah, uh, Mitch also has a question for me. All right, sorry. It says, uh, Tom, in your opinion, what is the best three-player Euro game available? Does he say Euro game or Euro games? Euro games. I'm sorry. Well, Tiger's, Tiger's Euphrase is a good three-player one. That's an interesting question because the guy on Geek Chat just asked me that. He says, "What's the best three-player games for war games?" For war games? Yeah. Well, why? Why Joe's think? I think Ticket to Ride is a great three-player game. I think um, uh, San Marco is a good three-player game. I think. Queen's Necklace is a great three-player game. Um, Carcassonne is a good three-player game. I, I, if a game can be played with three players, I, I, I normally like it. Unless it goes up to seven, then it's usually not good with three. Shadows over Camelot is okay with three, but it's a whole lot better with five plus. But any game that's three or four players is usually pretty good with three. Puerto Rico. <laughs> you know. So if, if, if the max players is four, like three to four players or two to four players, like Java, Mexico, Tico. Man- they all play pretty good with three. Manhattan's a good three-player game. Manhattan is a good three-player game. It's better four, though. But three is okay. All right. Now, this last question for Joe has yeah. nothing to do with games. But, <laughs> well, okay, maybe it is. He said, it's off-topic but interest to war gamers. And I'm not a war gamer, and this still intrigued me. Yeah. He said, when did people start calling wars what we call them now? For example, when did people start referring to World War II as World War II? I've always heard World War One referred to as the Great War or the War to End All Wars. But when did the term World War One and World War Two become the common term for these wars? This is by Michael von Annen. So Joe actually did some research on this. Yeah, I did, and you know I didn't find anything out. <laughs> I did actually. I found out that uh, there's actually seven. Was it seven? Hold on, I'm trying to find the the website. I can ever type it in right. There are seven. Uh, Wars that they categorized. Hey, type that link in, Tom. Will you? There were seven wars that were categorized as possible world wars, and I'm not sure I agree with it. What 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 does a a war need to be to be considered wo- world? Well, it's got to be multi-continent, right? Multi and multi-nation. I think it needs to be multi multi. Um, oh, I know what I did wrong. It needs to be multi-hemisphere, don't you think? It needs to be mm-hmm. in both hemispheres. I guess. Well, How could it be a world war any otherwise? Well, it depends on what you known. What is the known hemisphere, right? Or what is the known? What is known at that time? What is known at that time? So, if a country doesn't know about any other countries, known by who? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> well, you can't. Wouldn't you say that the uh, what Alexander did would be a world war? Maybe. Okay. Here's the wars that that, according to Wikipedia, yes, are candidates know. for the title of world war. Right. The world of the League of Augsburg. Right. So we'll say yes or no. What do you say? No. I agree. The War of the Spanish Succession? Definitely not. Right. I agree also. War of the Austrian Succession? Uh, That's a harder one. No. Says it was fought in India and North America. But yeah. when? Oh, well. 1740, man. The Seven Years' War. Now, I think that was a world war. Uh, I'd give you that. I think that was a world war. That would be the first world war. Though. Churchill calls it the first world war. Yeah. And you know Churchill is the authority. <laughs> the American Revolutionary War is not a world war. It was just a very small war. Uh, I'll give it the Second World War. <laughs> well, Joe's wrong. <laughs> Always. I'm the history teacher. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm the math teacher. The French Revolutionary Wars? Uh, no. Nah. Napoleonic Wars? Yes. Definitely. <sighs> yeah, probably. World War, there you go. World War Three, right there. He says he considers the War of 1812 as part of that. So if they do, that's World War Two. Yeah, the World, World War One is World War Three. No, World, 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 World War Two is World War Four. World War Two is World War Five. Now the the last two wars they have in here is the Cold War because they're including the Korean War, the Vietnam War, the Second Indochina War, the Afghan Soviet War. So is that'd that a World, World War? So that'd be World War Six. Five. This is worse than a Rocky movie or something. <laughs> <laughs> and then the War on Terror, and of course, you know, well, I don't want to get into that. Let's not talk politics because right. you know. But so why, when when were they called World War Two and World War One? I think they're called World War II as soon as they it started. Hey, I'm sure there's historians listening to us. Send us the answer. For, so I don't know who actually, Michael. Yeah, I don't know who actually coined the term. I think it's just generally accepted knowledge, right? Mm-hmm. I don't know. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna start a new a new section on our show, a new <laughs> a new thing, and these are session reports with celebrities. 
got so, to put, put the, 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 the one celebrity who was there. We got a soundbite from him. Yes. So these are actual real games yeah, that real, Joe real. and I have been involved with. I think we played this one the other night. It's our, it's our talk show here. I mean, I said I would never play this game again, but... Joe, Joe managed to get these guests together. Yeah, so I because it's, it's the theme of the Dice Tower. I was able to contact and get these guys to come play with us. They, yeah. they flew in. Well, yeah, they flew in from outer space. We, we did appreciate that. Uh, Go ahead. The first guy was, um, he, he, he called himself Anakin, but the other guys called him Darth Vader. So. Well, actually, the first time, we, we, got him, we got him all to play a game of diplomacy. Yeah, diplomacy. So The first was this guy named Anakin, but he had a really funny suit on. Yeah, I... I he didn't turn the air conditioning up really high, and I wasn't appreciative of <laughs> and he that. he kept on like... <gasps> yeah, he just kept talking and saying... Is with you, young uh, uh, really <laughs> stupid stuff. Like, what does that do? You he kept saying that, I he kept saying that to the uh, Luke Skywalker, this other guy playing. And they like sat at the end of the tables and they glared daggers at each other. <laughs> yeah, they were was, definitely glaring at each other. Uh, I mean, the game hadn't even started yet. Yeah, then there was this, talking about metagame. I mean, <laughs> there was this fat guy, Admiral Moti. And yeah, he wasn't that good. He just kept on talking smack to, to Vader the whole game. Yeah, and at one point, I mean, because he was he was Austria and Vader was 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 France, so they really didn't have much. Yeah, much connection. going on. And he was telling Vader to shut up, and Vader just picked him up. Yeah, like all of a sudden he started choking through him. the air. It was really weird. He but, made a choking thing with his hand, and he throat, <laughs> throat got constricted. Exactly. But we also had some guy named Bob who just showed up. Yeah. And um, this really weird alien, Jar Jar Binks. He, yeah, he, he was very annoying. He kept he, on, like, licking the game pieces. And yeah, was, he was Germany, and he kept, like, Misa, and so yeah. we all killed him. Misa, I mean, convoy. We, we all, like, <laughs> sat down and agreed to destroy him. Yeah, right he was, Germany was the first nation eliminated. But even when he, he kept talking, and we had made a rule against that, so um, Darth Vader asked for permission to kill him. He, he did it by killing him. Yeah. So I've never actually played a game where there was a, a real-life death in it before. Yeah, 187. But... <laughs> But it was, you know, he's yeah. dead, so. So, but me and Joe did good. What country were you again? Oh, I played as uh, Turkey. I, I thought we said Moti was Turkey. No, that's right. No, no, he was Moti was Austria. Oh, I'm sorry, I get all confused. All right, Austria, and you were Turkey. Right. Joe, uh, Joe's favorite country is Turkey. Yeah, I, like I was like Russia. So me and Joe. We kind of made a steamroller yeah. and just started going across. And we were good. I mean, we we, we took down uh, Moti, and but he was a chump. Meanwhile, Luke was Luke Skywalker was England. So he and Vader kept uh, Vader was France, and they kept arguing. They went in the other room. We heard this. Ching, ching, ching. You know, this, it went on for a long time. I heard, a, I heard something about father and this long no scream. I thought, and they almost missed their fifteen minute deadline. But they came back, buddy, buddy. Man. Yeah, uh, Luke was missing a hand. Yeah, and Vader had his helmet off, and boy, he is ugly. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know. I mean, this guy named Bob started talking smack to Vader, and Vader killed him. And so me and yeah. Joe decided that we should probably just retreat. And remember that question we were asked earlier about if we ever lost a game on purpose? Yeah, I think I think <laughs> this was one of those times because he Vader it was just, it ended up being a two-way victory with uh, Vader and Luke. Yeah, and so Luke said some, mumbled something about now he was part of the dark side. It was just it wasn't one of my favorite games. It was interesting though. Yeah, I'm I'm interested for a rematch. I like to try rematch. Yeah, I don't normally like running screaming down the stairs at the end of a game, but when we came back, they were gone. Yeah. yeah, there's a couple of dead bodies that we had to dispose of. But Jar Jar, he came back to life though. Yeah, and he kept talking. <laughs> he just won't go away. I hate, you know, here we are Christian missionaries, but yeah. uh, we silenced him. <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, so that was our session report for the week. Right, and so we'll, we'll try to have more of these sessions with with celebrities. I, I think with our fame and fortune, we can attract them. If, if there's a particular session report that you'd be interested in hearing about, I'm sure that we could probably conjure yeah. it up. Yeah. With our with our poll, our political power, we could probably invite those people that you'd like right. us so to have a game with. If there's with. anyone you'd like us to play a game with and a specific game, tell us. And we'll, and we'll, I'm sure. And we'll and rope and those people and in. And next time, we'll, we'll write a much more detailed session report because this one, you know, we, we decided just to wing it. And so... <laughs> Because it was such a good game that we didn't write out anything. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't mean that. But I'm sure next time, if you know, we, we can spend more time on this. We'll probably remember what countries everybody was a little bit better. <laughs> so, all right. Hey, guess what? It's time for my rant. Oh. I like to rant because I'm such a nice guy. Here's my rant today. It's about shilling. And I mentioned this in my game blog before, but shilling is what some people call it when someone gets on the Internet and promotes their game to such a heavy degree, blatantly <coughs> in everyone's face. What's the history of that name? I have no idea. You it's could not. probably look it up. No, I know. It's that some guy was named Shill. That isn't he the guy that put his game on? No, no, no. He took the name. Oh, anyway, okay. I've only seen it 
done badly three times. One was a guy named Scott Peterson, I think. No, it's Scott Peterson. That's the guy who killed his wife. <laughs> Allegedly. Guy, no, he was found for a There was a guy who made a game called Pirates Here, a uh, backgammon version of a game, and he spammed the message board rec.games.board. You can go back and look in the archives. It's just horrible. This guy got on top about how his game was so much more popular than Set Was a Catan. He always smashed Set Was a Catan. What are games do people play today? They play Set Was a Catan. Do they play Pirates Here? Uh, have you heard of it, Joe? Pirates Here? Yes. There's like ten games named that, isn't there? Well, it's it's not as popular as Settlers. It's close. Like, it sold 250,000 copies less. But <laughs> anyway, that was one. It was also a guy who got on and made a game about crop circles. This was more recently. Um, yeah. And he just went on and on about how this game was amazing and people told him to shut up. And then there was a very famous guy on... Hey, look, it's Gnome Home again. Board, BoardGameGeek.com and he actually took the name Shill King and promoted his games Card Chess, Crossword Pyramids and so on. And so people really viciously battled with them. I just looked at them as trolls, people to be ignored. But the problem is these three individuals and maybe a couple others have caused problems. So now if someone comes on and says, hey, I have a new game, a bunch of people will get on there and go, you're shilling, shut up, you know, get off the board, don't show your games here, pay money, advertise like a normal person. Folks, chill out. Shut up. <laughs> Let these people advertise their games in a small way. It's not a big deal. Say that again. Say shut up again. Shut up. <laughs> I, I love games. How am I supposed to find out about them if people can't tell me about them? You know, I go on the Rec Games board or Board Game Geek and someone says, I have a new game called Halukamaka. Well, I want to know what Halukamaka is. Is that, is that a board game? No, I just made it up. Oh, okay. It's a good <laughs> title. Well, it's copyrighted now. Halukamaka. Mary Halukamaka. I know, that's... Uh, anyway. So that's my rant. It's a small rant. My rant is, leave people alone. Give them a break. People aren't out there to destroy your day. A few are. But still. Ah, be nice. We want more people to join the hobby. We want more board game companies to, to spread their word and so we have a nice interconnection. So, lay off! <laughs> All right. Oh, boy. Now we have to talk about Joe's departure and Joe's I don't have a rant. deserting me over the I don't have a rant because stomach. I'm a peaceful, fun-loving, in love Barney kind of guy. Yeah, but we're actually, Joe's having Celebrity Tour 2005. You can meet Joe. Yes, and I'm going to give you my itinerary. No, seriously, um, I fly back to America on this coming Tuesday, and um, I just wanted to let you know, if anyone out there is going to be anywhere I'm going to be, I'd, be, I'd love to get together and play some games. I'll be, I'm going into uh, Detroit on Tuesday, and I'll be in, I'll be in the thumb area of Michigan, uh, Port Huron, uh, Adrian, where my sister lives. I'll be spending some time over in Wisconsin, in uh, Whitewater, Wisconsin, and then a lot of free time in those two months because I don't have a job. I mean, for the summer, I'm one of those lazy teachers and a missionary to boot. So, you know, if you do want to do something, then you can pay for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> be, you know, oh, man. Anyway, no. Seriously, um, if, you, if you're if you interested in getting together or if you have some kind of something, a, a gaming group in a uh, general area, Lansing, um, Port Huron, Jackson, let me know. Send me an email. Um, um, maybe I'll stop in and, and play games. I'd love to. My wife would like to come, too. So um, send me an email, my joestedman at gmail.com. And uh, I'd like to hear from you. So uh, Joe will be gone for about seven weeks mm -hmm. here. And I'll like be by seven my, ages. I'll by myself. All by myself. Oh, goodness. Well, I don't have that clip to play. So what, what, what can I play? I can play this one again. Because this is just a favorite What's clip. your name, scumbag? <laughs> oh, someone just asked us a question. The Flemish Games Archive? What is that? You can learn a lot of the real character of players by the way they play, says Gnome Home. I don't know. You think so? Does, does the way people play show their real character? Not at all. That brings up an interesting question because I'm werewolf. We're having this whole metagaming, out of character, in character, whole debate oh, going on right Joe now. Joe can now tell everyone what he is. I was a sit. <laughs> 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 or a werewolf, that is. And we had him going. But unfortunately, someone... I don't want to go too much farther into that because no, no, because I, I don't want to give anything away because this this show will be heard before the, the game is over. Yes, and it's pretty it's pretty it's 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 interesting. I was a Sith and now I am dead. 
but it's not over yet. Let me just put it that way. I'll, I'll stop. <laughs> People are going to actually listen to the show. Oh, I heard on the show, Joe said this. You're dead. You're not supposed to talk anymore. <sighs> Do you agree, does playing style equal personality? I say sometimes yes, other times no. Because I, I really try to consider myself to be a fairly nice person in real life, but there are times in the game where I'm just pure evil. What about the, the unnamed guy that we always talk about, the one that you told to shut up in that one game? Yeah, but he was a, a pretty nice guy outside the games. He was, and, but in the games he was as evil. In the games he was horrible. So I'm going to say no. I'm going to say maybe there's a small spark there. But I don't think so. I've I seen some really nice people get rather vicious in games, and I've seen some pretty outspoken, loud people be pretty nice in a game. I think usually, I, w- I, w- I, I, I'm, don't, I could be wrong, but I think usually people put on almost a different persona when they play a game. They kind of step out of themselves and into Well, here's this, for example. I don't think c- cutting off people's heads is funny at all. I mean, come on. To get your head cut off is horrible. It's a horrific thing. But I'll play guillotine and laugh. <laughs> and so will you. Of but, course. But you wouldn't cut my head off. I sure hope not. No, I would, well, I might, maybe I might sleep my eyes open tonight now, but gave Joe <laughs> an idea. If this show was not posted, Tom's last one testament is Joe does not get all his games. They go to the world, <laughs> to the poor children. This guy Gnome Home is otherwise known as Halloween Jack. He was in Belgium. So interesting. Anyway, I don't know. I, I, I would disagree. I would I would think that the way you play a game is really nothing to do with the way that you are as a person. All right. Well. We need to get into our mini-reviews in our top ten so that we finish this show in a reasonable time. So, we have our mini-reviews today, and mine is Infinifield. Now, Infinifield is a really simple game. There's these big, long plastic, they look like steel beans, but they're plastic. And they come in different colors, white, red, yellow, and blue. They're different sizes, like the white one is maybe two inches by two inches. The yellow one is twice that length. The blue one is twice the length of the yellow one, and the red one is twice the length of the blue one. And then you set them all, or I might have the colors mixed up, but you set them all over the table any way you want. They're tu- they all have to touch each other somehow, and you put a playing piece on one of the white spaces. On your turn, you move your pawn from one of these blocks to another block. And basically, you're trying to land on another pawn. If you do, they're dead. And every five turns, one of the players removes a block from the board, so it continually gets smaller. It's a pretty interesting game. It's okay as multiplayer, but when it gets down to two people, it's, a, it's pretty interesting. And the game will end because you're constantly taking blocks away. Mm-hmm. Uh, what did you think of it? What was that game again? I wasn't one, paying attention. <laughs> I'm talking <laughs> on myself here. <laughs> no, where you, the one where you moved the, the piece around and you took a block away each turn. Oh, uh, it, was, it was interesting. But I have to say it has some of the worst packaging I've ever seen. It looks like a 70s discount game that you would find on a, in a, what's that sort airport? Um, big Lots? No, the, well, Big Lots. It was the one at the airport, the one that sold the stuff they found at airports. I don't know. Um, no, I don't remember. But Big Lots or something. It just it looks Good cheap. Look. It looks junky, and it's from 2005. Folks, packaging is important. It's incredibly important. Make your games look good. Right. And if you're not sure, go to the Internet and buy a game made by Days of Wonder. Look at it. That's how your game should look. Well, at least 75 Are you on the Days of Wonder payroll? They're that good of games. You just talk about them a lot. Well, they're good games. <laughs> no, they are good games. All right. Eric's a good personal friend. Yeah, Joe says that now because you just smashed him. All right. <laughs> Do your Victoria, uh, Queen oh, Victoria game about, about how to grow up and be a good queen. Anyway, I'm doing a game called Victoria Cross. It was put out last year by an independent company called Worthington Games. It was their first game. It's a block game. It's a war game. And it has to do with the Battle of Rorkshire Drift. You know, the famous battle that was uh, made into a movie, the, the British guys versus the Zulu. It's, um, it's, oh. a, it's a pretty interesting game. Uh, maybe I'll get time to play because it's pretty light. Um, it only takes about an hour, maybe an hour and a half to play. And one player plays the Zulu, and he is, he's got you no know, guns, basically. And so he's basically getting slaughtered, but he has a lot of fake blocks. that, or um, What's the word I'm looking for, Tom? Not fake, but... Um, Decoys. Decoys, yeah, I'm sorry. He's got a lot of decoys. And so the, the British player has to try to decide where to move his forces, the what wall, and it, it's, it can come down to the wire. It's actually a really interesting game. The artwork is kind of funny. It's, got, it, it's just like, it's like you, if you like the movie, then you'll like the game. Um, the guy, I met the designer of the game. It's him and his dad. He's, when, he, when he designed it, he, was, he told me he, he had them sitting out in his garage, thousands of copies of the game, <laughs> and he was really hoping they sold. And so I bought one just kind of out of... Uh, 
feeling sorry for the guy, to be honest. But when I, I played it, and it was really fun. And um, I seen other people playing it at last year's Origins. I'm not sure if you know if anyone else. Only has. 20 people have ranked it on Board Game Geek, so, so I guess it's, it's not a very um, well-known game. But it's, it's average rating is 7.5. I see some. Let's see, Walt Mulder, Joe Stedman, <laughs> uh, Chris Farrell. Oh, Chris Farrell gave it a seven. He gave Chris Farrell is one of the most vocal wargaming people on the internet. He's he's a little bit more negative than I would like, but he does write incredibly um, detailed, very. Uh, in-depth reports of war games and, and regular games for that matter. Right. Then, you know, Maverick's got something smart to say, but that's okay. okay. Anyway, I like the game. It was a good game. It was worth the, it. Was pretty, it was fairly uh, cheap uh, for cost, and I would suggest picking it up even if, you know, if you can get it, help this guy out, this independent company. It's a good game. I think you'll like it. That's my website recommendation for the day. Search, do a search for Chris Farrell's blog. He, he has a very good blog on, on board games. It's It's very... Wordy and well written. He's 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 no slouch of a writer. He writes ten times better than I can ever write, and he's just a tremendously interesting person to read. A little bit more negative than I like, but you know I guess those people need it to bat, to counter us positive people who never have anything bad to say. Except yeah. for my rants. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up. All right, so here we are now with our top ten list for today. Yeah, um, I don't have a top ten thing, so we're just going to say this. What's your name, scumbag? Well, you really like that one, don't you? Well, <laughs> Let's do something else for once. No, oh, wait, do the RoboCop. What's that one say? Put down your weapon. You have 20 seconds to comply. <laughs> Maybe we have to play a game with RoboCop sometime. <laughs> that would be a fun Ooh, one. RoboCop. We could right. play one where we, like, bang. That'd be a good one to play RoboCop. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I think theme is more important than mechanics in a game. Not not much, but it is more important. I think a game that doesn't have a good theme can still be fun to play, but a game with a theme will always be better. I think all all the games in my top ten list have some kind of theme. So you're not a big abstract player, are you, Tom? No, but neither are you. <laughs> theme is where it's at. And so we both have our our top ten theme games. First, we'll mention our honorable mentions. My and I probably forgot some, but I'll just mention Return of the Heroes, great role playing Warcraft. A good adaption of the Warcraft game. Doom, very thematic. Um, Heroes Incorporated, and Lineage 2. Those are my honorable mentions. Now listen to Joe's <laughs> inane honorable mentions. My honorable mentions are all war games. Now come on. <laughs> there are some war games. Tactics 2. How's that thematic? Oh, come on. There's, there's always exceptions to every rule, but you can't play a war game without theme. I mean, otherwise it's just an exercise in futility. But what happens when you get so involved in the charts? How is it thematic anymore? What do you mean so involved in the charts? The whole game is themed. My soldier is going to kill your soldier. You feel for them when they die. <laughs> when you play squad leader and your your machine gunner gets taken out, man, you're just like, oh. Uh, you know, it's not uh, like your little meeple in Carcassonne gets knocked off the table. What do you do then? Oh, I well. cry. Yeah, right. <laughs> Number 10. Right, but that was just my honorable mention. I'm not going to take the easy way out. I'm Number gonna, 10. For me, is Lawless. I'm actually not a huge fan of the game Lawless. It's an okay game. It's one of the weakest of the Blue Box series, a game, a bunch of games that came in Blue Boxes. So that's what they're called. Uh, they're small and cheap. Lawless is a decent game, but it's so thematic. I mean, there's outlaws, there's cattle wrestling, there's all kinds of interesting things, and um, I, I, I just think it's a good. The theme of the Wild Wild West is really there. It's a really interesting game. If yeah, you like so the Wild West, yeah, I like it. It's uh, not as good as Gunslinger, but it's pretty fun. How do you play Gunslinger? Yeah, I have. I play the Origins. I'm semi-interested in playing it. Really? Yeah. Just because like of the theme. I, I, I really like the Wild West theme. There needs to be more games about the Wild Wild West. Agreed. Um, my number 10, and most of these games that I picked are not your typical war games. They're games because, like I said, all war games have themes, so I kind of stepped out of the uh, genre here for a few for a few games. Anyway, my number 10 game is a game I did a mini-review on which, last week, which is uh, Atlantic Storm. Now, it's a card game, and people say the theme is tacked on, but when you play it, you really get into the thing. There's people trying to fake German accents, and there's, do it, fuck the king, and there's people trying to act like they're British. When you're trying to convince... Yeah, fight that Nazi scum. <laughs> yes, exactly. When you're trying to convince people to join your team. Yeah, I won't argue with that. If, if Atlantic Storm did not have a good theme, I wouldn't play it. I wouldn't like it without the theme. Yeah, I, I think it's really fun. It's, it, it, it wouldn't work without the theme. Okay, my number nine game is uh, actually a collectible card game called Overpower. Uh, nowadays, Marvel versus is the, the rage, but 
Overpower is a defunct game system, but I really liked it. You had four superheroes, you fought four superheroes. You hit bam, 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 you know, you, you, you saw those big words crash, bang, wham, you know, from the old Batman TV show. That's just the way it felt. I really enjoyed it, and I'm going to get Joe to play it if I can ever buy someone's old Overpower collection. So, yeah, if you have an Overpower collection that you want to sell for cheap or donate to the Dice Tower... Yes, we will play test. We'll it. even dedicate a show to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're going to start selling airtime? Yeah, there you go. Give us a game, and we'll talk about your company for two minutes. Anyway, all right, my number uh, number nine game is uh, a game that is I don't really like, but I just I think it's nothing but theme, and that's zombies. Yeah. And it's zombies. When you're playing zombies, especially if you get the glow-in-the-dark zombies. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> I, just, uh, I think it's great when you pull the chainsaw out and you want to zombie, you want to kill some zombies and... Yeah, I just had fun. I, I actually traded my zombie games away, but I think I'm going to still buy a bag of zombies <laughs> so that I can have a memoir game against zombies. Now, that would be cool. Someone Did you see read that somewhere or you make it up? Someone made it up somewhere. It, it's on the Internet. <laughs> a zombie. And so you're saying that, what was it about memoir being a historical simulation again? Zombies are real, man. <laughs> I saw one the other day. Oh, well, my anti-tank gun's going to target <laughs> the zombies. Oh, it went right through them. You need an AG, not an armor-piercing round. I'm sorry. I'm getting technical. <laughs> Number eight for me is Rainer Kinesia's Lord of the Ring game. I know that some people say it's not thematic, but I'm sorry. Every time I play for it, it feels like you're struggling through trying to throw the ring into the yes. Mount Doom. Yes, if you have the Sauron expansion. Mm, even without it, it's just... I just really like it. It just really... And when, and when you win, I play with kids and they sit on the table and they cheered because we won. It was so exciting. And then when we lose because some selfish slob refuses to, to take a hit point. <laughs> yeah, I'm not taking a hit point. <laughs> All right, so your number seven. Uh, my number seven is... Bang. <laughs> bang is like my number 11. Wah, wah, wah. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> oh, I should have that one on here. Yeah. I don't know. Something about playing Bang makes you think you're in a spaghetti western. If you don't know what a spaghetti western is, that's one of those. The Italians, for some reason, they really love the American Old West, and they've made a dozens and dozens of movies about the Old West, and they always got that same sound. You know that? How's it? Tom, can you do a good impersonation of it? No. But Come on, I want to hear. No. <laughs> Come on, man. Wah, wah, wah. That was Tom. That wasn't me. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> All right. But Bang is a great game. Really thematic. <laughs> Every time I play it, people sitting there screaming at each other, No, don't shoot me. Don't let the dynamite go off. Number seven, just newly added to this list, is Shadows Over Camelot. As long as the traitor's involved, it's so much fun. Every mm. move that everyone does is always being analyzed. What are you doing? Are you the traitor? How come you're not helping us? Are you searching for the Holy Grail? Would you say that's thematic or just part of the game? Maybe it's just part of the game, but it, it, adds, was, it, it was, adds a layer of thing. If it was thematic, we'd all be saying, Me, me, me. <laughs> But we do sometimes. <laughs> we do. We do sing the, the Holy Grail song. You know? What is your favorite color? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, someone mentioned that they should make an expansion to add it, Monty Python stuff in. Would, would I, would I buy it. it? I would buy it. I would. Hey, Eric, if you're listening, which we know you are, then uh, you should do that. I'd buy it. Uh, make sure you get Cosmic Encounter first. <laughs> All right. Number six. Number six for me. Uh, no, you skipped my number seven, Tom. You're trying to get ahead of me. No, I'm at, I'm at number seven. So. No, all right. My number seven is Clash of the Gladiators. And uh, I traded this game away to Tom for a while, but it's really fun. I like the, the, the chariots of the, the gladiators, and you yell at each other, and you tag team each other. And I, just, eh, I don't like the game pretty much at all, but kids love it. And so I have it in my game, my game club. The kids just really like playing it. And okay, I, will no, give, this. I will give Joe it's very thematic. Yeah, kids wouldn't like it unless it was thematic. And, and, and the cool thing about the game is even when you die, you can be the wild animals trying to take the other people down. Yeah. So, so no one's really out of the game unless that's you're playing with very six vital people. for a Euro game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but come on. It's not fun to play. I mean, when you played that miniature game at Origins and your whole squad was wiped out on, before you hit the beach. Yeah, but that was kind of cool because it, it was historical. I know. I had one soldier that made it to the beach and he made it like five foot in and then he got killed. Oh. <laughs> but well, my, whole, my whole platoon was killed in the landing craft. But would you like it if you had to stay there and watch the rest of the game? No, but, you know, that's, you know, whatever. That's not life. It is the game. Games aren't life. All right, my number six is Pirate's Cove, made by Days of Wonder. Now, Joe disagrees. Ooh, look at me and my purple pirate ship. I'm a pirate. Ooh. I think it's fun <laughs> regardless. You have a little treasure chest, your ships, you hold, you fight each other, with parrots and, and hooks, and it's just the whole experience. Hooks? Is what really are hooks got to do with it? There's a picture of hook in the box. <laughs> is that copyright infringement? 
No. <laughs> Pirates actually had hooks. <laughs> no. Okay. All right. Do your, do your number uh, six now. Uh, number six. Dead on arrival. D O A. Uh, Duel of Ages. <laughs> as much as I make fun of Duel of Ages, it's pretty fun. It's got a lot of theme. When you're when you play one character, you're um, pick a, who's a good character, Tom. Lyra Swan. <laughs> Not Lyra Swan. That's his wife. <laughs> um. I don't know. You, you, you pick, Arwen Ironshanks. Anyway, you pick a character, then you kind of role play him a little bit, and then you fight someone, and you do the quest. And I don't know. It's just it's thematic to me. I just I think it's a pretty thematic game. My number five game is hard for me to pronounce. It's called In Zeichen des Kurezes, I think. And what's, the, what's the that English, in English translation is, I believe, in the sign of the cross, or in the name of the cross. Let me look down here. It doesn't say. It's is about this, the crusade. Is this the one you try to take Jerusalem? Yes. Um, the game uses the same uh, cube tower that Wallenstein uses, but I like I like Wallenstein oh. better. It's a better game. I but like this, this game. This game is really fun because it really feels like you're on a crusade. You're sitting around attacking Muslim towns, but if you need more troops, you can attack Christian towns too. <laughs> and that's what they did. So, you know, the end game, there's a little bit of problem, but it's just, it's, it's fun walking around, plaguing each other, sending Muslim troops to attack each other's Christian armies. Um, without getting into the politics of the time, the Crusades and all, I, I thought it did a decent portrayal of the of All right, the well, if it's such a good crusade. game, then how come you only brought it out to play against me one time? Because I played the game four or five times, you've just never been around. <sighs> but I'm willing to play that one again soon. It, it, one of the problems is I don't usually bring it because it has such a massive box. That's true. No, I like that game. Um... My number five game is the opposite of yours. It's got an American t- or an English title now, and it had a German title. And it's Fearsome Floors, or as we all know it as. Flinsterfleur. Flinsterfleur. Now, um, when you play that game, it's the game with you're being chased by the monster, the Frankenstein, or the Dracula, or whatever. It's just fun. The whole time you're, like, trying to scare your wife, you know. Ooh, you're still jumping. Yeah, I had a, actually today, we had final exams, and when they were done, the kids played games, and a group of them played played it, and they just had a good time having the monster chase him down and <laughs> yeah. yell when the monster got him. Yeah, it's, it's pretty fun. Uh, my number four game is Betrayal at House on the Hill. Um, I, I, it's a recent game by Avalon Hill. I like it because it's, it's just so thematic. There's so, every card, they have everything from every B horror movie ever made in the, in the game. There's little dolls running around and, and evil... Witches and ghosts and doppelgangers and mirrors and mists and spiders and it's all in the game. If you play it with the lights dimmed down and with horror music on, it's just it's a fun experience. You want to take a two-second pause and answer these questions? No, tell them to stop asking questions. Okay, I'll take no more questions and we'll answer the ones that he asked. All right. Well, first is he wants to know if we're going to we're going to Essen, and I said no. No. When is Essen? Essen is in November, I believe. October, November. Either way, it's in the middle of our school year. I mean, yeah, we can't go. Getting time off from school and paying the ticket to go to Essen would probably be yeah. more than. <laughs> uh, then the second question he said is reprints of game good or good for better availability or bad because it's hurting the collector's value. That's easy. Good. Good. Who cares about the collector's value? Agreed. Games aren't made to be collected. Get out there and play your games. If you just have a game just to collect it, you should be smacked around. I agree. And here's the last one. Um. Tweaked, rethemed, reissued. China versus K and K. Would you prefer a reissue of the exact same game or the one of the improved gameplay? I'm not I sure. don't mind if they do reissues. I haven't played China yet. Well, I, I, have I, played I, I will disagree because I think they really screwed up Lowen Hertz when they rethemed, when they fixed, they tweaked it. Ah, you're wrong. Domain's better than Lowen Hertz. Anyway, the battle of the champions: Lowen Hertz versus Domain. <laughs> Lowen Hertz. And who are you to argue with the designer? I am the man. Don't you know I am Joe Manly Man Stedman? I know these things. And Lord Hertz is better. Let's get over. You're on number four now. Let's do your number four. <laughs> Heroescape. Oh, you don't even own this game. No, it's, it's nice. It's, 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 it's pre-painted miniatures. I mean, what can you not like about that? And when you take your little squad versus the... You take your little American infantry squad against the dragon. That's just cool. Yeah. Heroescape is a lot of fun. It's very themish. And it's got hot lava dip. Yeah. Well, not yet, but it's coming soon. Oh, it's coming soon. Hot lava dip. Number three is, for me is bootleggers. I mean, we all talked in mobster voices. We all talked about driving, opening up our speakeasies and selling our, our, our hooch and just driving around in the trucks. And it was, it was a lot of fun. Um, I, every time I played it, I, I really enjoyed it. Yeah. 
I would agree. Uh, my number three is Kremlin. It's the old Avalon Hill game. Nothing better than trying to kill each other and uh, <laughs> make your person get old. And you, everyone starts talking in a Russian accent by the time the game is over. It's probably easier to get into the theme if you're from the 80s and live through the Cold Era, Cold War Era. <laughs> cold Era. Cold Era. Ooh. But um, it has a good theme. I like Kremlin. We're supposed to be done in a few minutes, aren't we? Yeah, we, we are. So we're, 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 we're moving we're along. We're moving right now. along. All right. My number two is the same as Joe's number two. War of the Ring. War of the Ring. Yeah, very thematic. You want to play the epic Lord of the Rings books, movies, whatever. It's it's all in War of the yeah, Ring. Yeah, I And they're adding that. even more in an expansion. It's so exciting. It was just like the book and the movie. The, like the dwarfs were basically useless in the game. <laughs> yeah. I have, I've yet to see dwarfs be used for any good. I mean, in our last game, they almost got into battle. Now, I was trying to get into battle. <laughs> and they fun. still did it. <laughs> ah. But anyway, uh, no, it's really thematic. I, I just, the whole time, it, it, whoever plays the evil team, I, halfway through the game, usually about halfway through, they start making evil laughs. <laughs> and things like this. And, and you know, when the, wing, when the ring is revealed, everyone, wow, we'll get the ring. And everyone's talking. And it's just a good thing. It's a, yes. All right, for our top games, thematic games, the number one game. Yeah, for me, is Duel of Ages. Joe mentioned it number six. He's wrong. It's number one. <laughs> Where else can you have Genghis Khan riding on a motorcycle wielding a sniper rifle and laser armor from the future, fighting against um, Robin Hood, armed with a twin-action bolt crossbow, Maybe riding on a skateboard, and they're fighting in the Alamo. I mean, come on. That's just cool. Sounds like a Doctor Who episode. <laughs> Doctor Who is cool. <laughs> so I love the game for that purpose. I haven't played it now for like a month. I'm starting to feel withdrawal. It's a good game. Yeah, we'll, we'll play it then. My number one is the Omega Virus. Mwah! <laughs> Tom hates this game. It's it's the most thematic <laughs> game I own. If you sit around, there's four player, and you try to take out the computer, and the whole time the computer is yelling at you, and it just it just adds to the theme. I just really like it. When I was young, sometimes I was bad, actually a lot, and my father would take me and spank me because <laughs> I was bad. So th- if I ever want to relive that that horrible traumatic experience, I play. Omega virus. <laughs> Stop. It's better than that. You're right. It is. <laughs> but not much. Because yeah. here I'm voluntarily choosing it. <laughs> and my dad should have spanked me <coughs> because I deserved it. Don't let me. Don't, don't, don't let me and make my father out to be And Mr. Vassal, if you're listening to the show, Tom is making fun of you. I am not. Dad, I'm sorry. Sorry. Let me do Because at the time, I think your dad was still up on you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm much bigger than he is, and it's still... Still doesn't matter. You're much bigger than everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, hey, well, you wait till you meet us at Origins. We're, we're probably not what we look. We probably don't look like what you think we look like. Yeah, Joe just shaved, so he, yeah. he looks. He looks uh, respectable. I shaved now. my beard. I look like some kind of weirdo. Well, I don't know. I'm, I'll have it back sooner or later. I don't understand why these MP3s change here to a different kind of. I don't know. I'm all confused anymore. But. If you have questions, ask us questions, but don't expect them to get answered until August. Um, unless you ask them directly after listening to the show, and somehow we get them before we record the, our July shows. Yeah. So, well, uh, do we have anything else that we can say? No, it's just any, any thoughts? Well, it's been a good week. We're going to play some more board games tomorrow and Saturday, Sunday. And Joe's Get Ready to Come to America... I'm moving my, all my board games from my classroom to another classroom. That's exciting, kind of. And rather than ramble on, I guess, then that would be it for today. I thought there was a question I had, but I can't remember what it was. Well, we can always hit it in the next episode. There you go. We do thank you for listening to the Dice Tower, your show about board games, all kinds of board games. Um, By all means, if you want us to talk about something, send us a question. Hey, if we can make your ride to work back and forth more enjoyable, then hey. And if you want us to mention your name, we will, because we're just that cool. If you want to hear your name on your iPod... Then or if you want to hear us play a game with your favorite person, if you want us to play a game with uh, Snoop Doggy Dog, you know, if we're we so, will do we're, that. We're so desperate for fans. If you want us to sing a song like to your wife for her anniversary no, we on the iPod, we will. We are not that desperate. Not you know, like that when desperate. you call into a radio station and they're like... All right, I'm going to turn up the music here. This next song is dedicated to, to Louise and... <laughs> Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. And I'm Joe Stedman. And this is the Dice Tower. 
And that's all there was to that episode. Lots of different interesting things there. You could tell that we really still weren't at our game yet there. Just kind of rambling all over the place all the time. Uh, you could hear Joe clanking on the keyboard, <laughs> looking up things or talking in, in chat. But things got better and better as, as time went by. And I was really pleased with our next two episodes, the Origins episodes. And we'll be playing those in a couple of weeks for you too. Now... The one thing that we talked about in this episode was the fact that we would surprise each other with our top 10 lists. In theory, I thought that was a good idea to bring something and say, hey, you know, so we get an honest reaction. I can't believe you picked that game. But we found that oftentimes then we really had nothing to say because our shock was so great or our surprise was great that someone picked a certain game. And so it's usually better just if we already knew what the top 10 lists are. We could hold in our reactions. And, you know, even now Sam and I might have... I'll say, Sam, I can't believe you put that game on your list, and we're talking about it, and I'll be, and I'll say, well, save it for the podcast, save it for the podcast. Um, also, here you, you you heard the very first, and unfortunately not the last attempt at a uh, funny session report. This was by far the most shouted down feature we ever had to a podcast, so you won't be hearing much more of it. <laughs> You'll hear a couple more in the upcoming episodes, but that was it. We got enough response from people who said. Don't do that. And also those audio clips, they'll fade out after time. It was something we thought, you know, we heard DJs do it. They played audio clips in their things, but DJs were much better at it than we were. And we were running with a really, really slow computer. But what do you know? And you know, you know, another thing that's interesting to me is I listened to this and I said, oh, I forgot I even had Dicetower at gmail.com. I didn't even know I had that email. I have to go look that up. And we also talked about a mythology game that we play tested, and it was a really interesting game. And that's been it's been over two years now. I still haven't heard hide or hair of it. I don't even know who the designer was or anything because it was through a friend that I played it. So uh, maybe it will show up. We don't have enough good games about mythology. Well, that's pretty much enough of me rambling at this point in time. So I'll just say goodbye to you all now. I apologize again that this is maybe not the episode you were looking for, but it's a great contest to enter here, StarCraft. And hopefully we'll have the uh, pretty interesting podcast from the Talk Shoe live call-in episode. As always, check our website, www.thedicetower, for up to d- updates on what's going on, and I'll try to keep you posted there. We'll see you all next time. This is Tom Basil. Thanks for making the Dice Tower part of your day. We'll be back next week with even more great game talk and a new top ten list. If you can't wait that long to get your Dice Tower fixed, visit the website at www.thedicetower.com. If you have any questions or comments, you can email the show at thedicetower at gmail.com. I'm Mike Fitzgerald, and this has been the Dice Tower with Tom Vassell. Good gaming to all, and to all a good night. StarCraft.